email Miss Denise Ramon at deniseramon.com, which we'll put in the description box, right, Paula? <laughs> you, Paula, I miss you too. Anyway, Eric, I love you very much. We took a little vacation and now I'm ready to start working again with you. Uh, I missed that. And uh, we're going, you know, out of the gates running. But today we have a very special uh, guest. I don't know how many people have heard of this gentleman, James Randy. I know that when I first started channeling Eric, somebody tipped me off about him. I never seen his face. I don't know very much about it, but this is a guy who is so firmly, adamantly a, uh, um, a skeptic against life after death that he offered one million dollars to whoever could preach him wrong. So, um, is he? Did Eric? Did you bring Mr. Randy in? He he did, and he comes in, and he's. Um very gentleman-like, you know, very like old school gentleman coming in. Um, he has like a, he sounds like a real manly voice, you know, like a strong manly voice. Um, but Eric does want to say, um, hi, mama. Um, I, he was with y'all on vacation. He says um, he always goes with you on vacation. Mm. And he wants to say that he loves you and he loved being around the family. Um, and he's, he shows me splashing in like a pool type water. Oh, so, there's a lot of water there. Okay, so he's showing me splashing in there with the feet. I feel like he was aggravating some people there and he, he laughs, but um, so now, <laughs> so he says he's ready now and he's, Eric is, um, he feels really like, wow, look who I'm up against, you know, like, look who I'm next to. All right. Well, tell me about how you feel about Mr. Randy. And then Rand Mr. Randy, you can tell us how you feel about Eric. And then we'll get into the meat of the questions. Let me get a pen. So I'm take notes. Well, he says, you know, he likes, he, he says he feels kind of honored to be next to this gentleman because um, he says, one, uh, he's he didn't ever think that he would ever see somebody like eric on the other side you know like see anybody wait um, he's honored by whom sorry er, that james would not have seen eric because james is thinking that he would okay. have it. so eric feels like you know you get to see me and um and they get to be in each other's energy and eric says even though he wasn't anti god but he still had a, a hard time believing and that there was, he knew that there was good, but he had a hard time believing that good is going to come from certain things because he saw so much oh. um, um, uh, injustice or whatever. Um, a lot of, uh, Eric was a big healer. I don't know if that's ever been mentioned, but his heart just really, reaps of of a healer like who he was and um but eric says he um this guy here james i keep wanting to call him randy but james he has a sense of humor and okay. eric likes that he's like you know they're kind of like joking around going hey bud you know doing this and and just kind of joking around with each other and he likes that his energy feels um light but serious and i feel like the seriousness is because of where he is with us right now okay well let me ask you this mr randy if you don't mind you know you have this one million dollar reward for anyone who, who could prove to you that there is consciousness survival after death why did you do that to begin with why the contest um he's just, he just seems so strong in his voice he's um he said because there were so many people always trying to tell him he was wrong or trying to prove he's wrong or trying to he says preach to me and all this other stuff and um so he's like okay prove it and he figured the serious people would be the ones doing it because there's a million dollar price tag. So he knew that the person who would be doing this had to be accountable. And he says, not that 
you know, everyone that participated in that, um, that exercise, you know, that said, I can do this and that. He says, you know, um, they really believed that, but he just felt like a million dollars would, um, they really had to have something really, um, he kind of laughs, something solid to prove. Well, I want to ask you, in a minute if anybody came close but when you said people came to preach to you did they try to preach like organized religion type, type of stuff or spiritual kind of stuff um, he said both you know people would he says as you know people always give you unsolicited advice unsolicited oh, yeah. and he got that a lot um he got that a lot he's showing me through the mail and he's showing me like letters he got and stuff like that he, he did receive a, a lot of that um, because it's, he said his, he said he was very vocal about how he believed. And um, he said that um, it ruffled a lot of people's feathers. But what did you believe? Actually, I don't, I really don't. And Denise, you, you didn't know who he was until I no. said you want to interview him. So, sorry. Mr. That's okay. Mr. Randy. No, sorry to James. Oh uh he so laughs <laughs> what, what were your beliefs you know he he says um well he and he's going let me answer her question he's saying his beliefs were that it's up to you to do what it is to create or do whatever it is you want it's nobody else helping you it's you um, he was, he says he's was very big on taking responsibility for yourself. Good. And he says, and so many people push it off on other people, give whatever, or they, he says, um, as we say now, but it's like they give away their power. They give away themselves, he says, to other people, and then they take it on. And he would see how other people took on others' belief systems. He said, like religion. Yeah. And, and some of this he's saying, and he's saying, and he, I don't, he says he doesn't give a shit his words. <laughs> but a lot of the religions that he saw and heard or whatever, I, I guess investigated, were nothing but cults. Yeah. And he said, you know, but everybody believed that. And he said, if they would have spent 30 minutes investigating one of the articles that they were given to believe, they would have known that this wasn't true. Why do people so, do that? Why do you think people believe things that they not shouldn't really necessarily believe and would not believe if they investigated it thoroughly? Oh, some are get that faith. Well, he said, for, <clears throat> excuse me, he said for some brainwash, that's his words. Um, he said, and others is because they don't believe in themselves enough to think, you know, I can uh, tie my shoe. I can push the ball across the street. And I don't know why he's using that analogy. And he says, you know, um, it's about, they just don't believe in themselves. So they go believe in what 30 other people or thousands of other people believe because then they belong. Oh, it's a pack mentality. We're all, I guess we're pack animals. Were you an atheist? He said, yes, in some terms, how what people would say he is, but he said, actually, no, because he believed in himself. Okay. So like you were God and you're a whole part of God, that kind of philosophy or not? Uh, he didn't use the term God, but he knew he was intelligence. Yeah. Oh. And I'm asking him with, with the way he's saying that, did you believe in other beings from other planets? Hmm. And he had thoughts that there were other beings. Okay. But we aren't, but he didn't see it as we're one, we're connected or anything like okay. that. Okay. But you believe that there could be life in, off, uh, outside of Earth? There was, a, there was, he says, yes, he believed that there 
probably was a possibility. Okay. So tell me about your upbringing. Were your parents religious? Were they atheists? I mean, in regards to how you became who you are, tell us about your childhood. Um, he's, he's showing me like there was some organized religion in there when he was younger. Um, uh, nothing over the top, but he said it was there. Um, so it must have been a mild, not such a strong okay. religion. I feel mild. like the way he, yeah, it was such a strong. Um, but he also, he says he also saw a lot of deceit in that. Yeah. And so that was, he said at a young boy, and I feel like under the age of 12, he kind of like, how could they believe in that and still speak their words? Okay. Do other things outside, you know, it's kind of like the, they say the one religion that doesn't drink that um, they're in the bar on Saturday night and go to the church on oh, Sunday. Yeah, right, right, right. But um, he's, but he said he learned and he said he always felt different, you know, um, none of that ever um, resonated with him. He yeah. tells me he has more of like a, a science mind. Oh, okay. Was there any one thing in your childhood or young adulthood or adulthood that triggered you to do this whole thing with the $1 million contest and being uh, quite skeptic? Or was it just a gradual accumulation of things? He says it was gradual, but you know, there's always a start in a sense. Yeah. And he didn't understand how just because somebody said something, everybody followed it. Everybody walked out the door following that. Mm -hmm. And he said he learned early on not to follow behind everybody. He wasn't a follower. He always went a different direction. And he's showing me it's like how people follow everybody and they're standing in a long line and there's another line with nobody in it, but everybody's following behind everybody. And he says he just always was going the other direction. Um, I don't feel like he had I feel like he was kind of alone, a loner, and, and it's not a loner, but alone when he was growing up, like he didn't have very many friends of what he's showing me because he was um, what people would call um, rebellious or argumentative or whatever, but it, he he's telling me he wasn't those things. He just wanted proof of what oh, you yeah. were talking about. That is about to say, hey, you tell me this shit, and I want proof. Is he said, yeah, he said yes. And and he just he he says now he knows. Oh, we're gonna talk about everything you think now, because I'm sure he that. said now he knows that that was his intuitiveness. Oh that why he didn't believe and why things didn't feel good. Yeah. But well, he's telling me he didn't know that at the time. Yeah. Uh, do you think, would you consider yourself a, a did you consider yourself a closed minded skeptic or an open minded skeptic? He definitely says I wasn't closed minded. He says, uh, he says I was open to anything and everything, but you prove it. Only the facts, man. All right. So you, you talked about your intuition. Some people think you were psychic. Now, looking back, do you think you had gifts to channel oh, he, and psychic gifts, et cetera? He said, yes, he, yes. He said he was very, um, he was, um, he didn't like, he doesn't like that word psychic, he said. And I feel like when he was here, living here, he didn't like that word because then that categorized him into that yeah. group that, you want a label. that I'm in. Um, but he said, um, he just thought it was using his his brain using what he was given his brain his thoughts okay. his common sense his education yeah. that's what he thought it was and um and he thought if anybody just used their brain they would know these things he didn't put two and two together that that was his intuitiveness his psychic abilities well now what's your perspective from as a spirit do you feel like you could foretell the future 
do you feel like you could really channel? That when he was here or now? No, no, from, from your perspective now, look back at the human James Randi and would you say, yeah, that dude was channeling or yeah, that dude had psychic abilities. He says definitely. And he says what he did was he was pulling back the curtains and the way he shows me like yanking them back because he says there are a lot of frauds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was just pulling that back and he could see a lot of fraud. So he was just pulling that back. And so he came out what people might say aggressive or, you know, um, yeah, he just says aggressive about saying that they're wrong and just like slamming the door on everyone. But he says there's a lot of frauds in there. So, yeah, he, but he says, yes, he definitely was. But he you said, tossed the baby out with the bathwater, Mr. Randy. <laughs> he said he couldn't allow himself to really get into the um, the channeling part, though. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, too too much. Uh, all right, did anyone ever? Okay, well, first of all, this is actually uh, uh, I saw this first. Probably needs to be done. Um, why was it so important to you to dedicate so much of your time debunking paranormal claims, spoon bending, mind reading, fortune telling, ghost whispering, water dowsing, faith healing, UFOs, etc.? Maybe we already answered that, but if you want to add anything. No, he says it's good. He says it's good. Um, he says because there's a lot of um, he said there's a lot of fraud out there, and he could see how he says again he could see how people jumped on the bandwagons of those and everybody believed. Mm -hmm. And he says this is how a lot of um, he doesn't want to say a lot, but he says how several conspiracy theories get started, you know, conspiracy yeah. stories, because people, you get enough people wrapped up in that, and then poof, it's a true story. And with that, he just, um, he said he was just so sick of people saying they could do something. And, and as you say that about the spoon bending, and he showed yeah. me the fork bending and stuff like that, I'm like, how can you say that that's not real? And, um, he said, you know, nobody could really explain how they did that. They would say, this is what it is, but it never really came from them. It came from somebody else. And then as he's telling me that, I said, it had to come from a part of them. And he just said, he just, um, he wanted like solid explanation. Yeah, that- well, There's behind it. What you're doing is with your energy, you're moving the atoms apart, the molecules and atoms of the spoon and the thinnest part apart. So it becomes weaker and weaker. I mean, that's my theory. I'm sticking to it too. Well, he said, you know, and this is where his ignorance came into play. Yeah, I, I'm like you. I like science behind things. And he says, you know, in hindsight, and he kind of laughs, you know, he did have a lot of ego involved too. Okay because so hard. Of, I do. but do you yeah. think that part of you had a heightened sense of justice to protect those who were being deceived did it was was there that part in you in your heart he i don't know he says i don't know if it was in my heart but he just saw a lot of he's saying a lot of fraud a lot of um people telling lies and saying things, you know, right. manipulating people, mm -hmm. you know, about um, making money off of people and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and he just um, felt like, you know, the show is proof, show is proof. Had you ever heard of Channeling Eric when you were alive and you thought of oh, that evil woman like some people do? It's okay. Tell me. He, sa he says, he goes, no, ma'am, I did not hear. Okay. Yes, but somebody like me wouldn't go looking and be in that energy. Okay. For that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So uh, was there ever a paranormal event that you could not explain and did it leave you to question even if a little bit? These are questions from YouTube community. He 
he he says you know there were um, several, but I feel like he's showing me like there were several big ones and many many ones, you know. But he always brushed it off as we do. We just say no that that can't happen. Okay, because we can make justify why but he's showing me how something flew off his table one time Ooh. it was like a glass um i don't know if it was a paperweight or an ashtray or something something heavy and he and i'm asking him how did you like write that off and he just the ac was on really really he, high he, well he said he wanted the the vibration is what he goes the vibration okay do you know eric what did what made that thing move off the table something dark or something from the light no it wasn't anything dark but um i do feel like it was um i i feel like it was a mother energy so i guess his mother it was his that energy to let him know that there was something else on the other side because um even though he played the tough guy eric says there's still that fear, like, what else is there? Yeah, of course. He it says it's an empty feeling to think, okay, this is it. 